Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Vines. Dan Mackey here from The Loaded Grape, T.C. Frazier from Tryon Distributing. Oh, my goodness. It is uh, it's basketball season. It's, uh, it's, it's the end of March Madness, April Mayhem, whatever you want to go with. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to think of all the high, high, you know, the uh, the sayings uh, of Dickie V. You know, we've got some awesome selections, some scintillating, uh, sensational selections, baby. They're awesome. <laughs> I, I, got, I got to tell you a quick little story as, we, as people are tuning in. Uh, so I worked the shop on Saturday night watching the Gonzaga game. I was like, okay, I closed the door. Everybody was out. I was like, oh, there's like eight minutes left. I'll watch the end of the game. So then it goes into overtime. I'm like, well, now I can't go anywhere. So I'm texting Tanya. Like, I'll be over when the game – so when G Gonzaga hit that buzzer beater, mm -hmm. I was running around the shop like Jimmy V, looking for somebody to uh, hug. <laughs> like, that was how it was. It was so funny. Uh, I was like, "There's nobody to hug," but I'm so excited right now. I have no idea. Uh, so uh, yeah, we got this. Is our our ballers on a budget show? Yeah. Uh, we know that you got the, the temperature's getting great. You're going to be wanting to sit down on the porch. Yeah. And, and have some porch pounders. So this is really a porch pounding show about wines that are totally going to be big in flavor, but not on the budget. Not I mean, on the budget. And kind of going back to the roots of the show where we're trying to give you guys, you know, the best bang for the buck, circa 20 bucks, circa 15 uh, Actually, or so everything's 15 and so, under. Yeah, we really want to really, find that, that was our thing tonight. We really wanted to find, as Danny said, as things open up, as, as things go outside, you know, we start to get a little bit more gathered here and there. I mean, hey, you know, these are, you know, I think I probably rated the seller as much as I want to. Now I got to restock it with some uh, more budget-friendly wines, and these are all uh, oh. very appropriate. Uh, I think that could that could really fit uh, across the board here. So. All big budget wines here, and what we did tonight, because again, it's baller on a budget. Um, we we not only did six pack specials, but I also did case specials, mm -hmm. and you can get your club discount on top of that. Um, so it's gonna. I mean, there's some really really good deals. Yeah. Um, and let's start. Let's yeah, let's, let's dive right, let's, let's dive let's into, right it, into it because uh, I want you guys to be able to watch the basketball game tonight and uh, and not be uh, not be you know get ready, just do all the things you need to do to. To tune into the big game, uh, but this one, right? This, we're gonna start this off. This is the Pinot Grigio you grew up next door to. Yeah. I mean, this is this is your bro. This is the guy you you know borrow a five spot from when you need it. I mean, just this, the old reliable, you know, the old go to, the old uh, what was that? Hank, you know, Hank Stram uh, uh, Super Bowl uh, four or something like that. He was like uh, the old trap and switch or the old uh, uh, thirty two power trap, right? So you know. So anyway, this is just one of those. Uh, if I was a coach and I had that play, this is what I'm gonna go to every single time. So we've done on the show. A numerous uh, Pinot Grigios, Grise. Uh, obviously, we, we, you know, I would say the ones that are getting the most oohs and ahs, uh, and certainly they're claiming the price are more than northern Pinot Grigios up in uh, Friuli. Uh, but we're actually going to stay on the eastern side, on the Adriatic side, go down a little bit further, uh, and a little kind of tucked away DOC called Malonese, which actually is an in between Abruzzo to the north and Apulia to the south. So it's kind of this interesting area that is fairly warm. I mean, it's a fairly warm area, but however, this particular DOC, the reason it was created was because uh, of the white wine just thrives very, very well though. So even earlier ripening grapes, uh, you know, Sangiovese or even uh, something like a, uh, a Montepulciano, which grows just north of there, uh, doesn't do as well uh, here. So the, the difference being, say, from like the Atems that we've tried before, some of the other northern Pinot Grigios that you're familiar with, still has that good acidity, but being a little bit further south and, and harvesting earlier, but yet maybe two, three weeks later than they do in the north, you get a little bit more body. You get more a bit more pH. And, I, and again, when I say pH, slight more. Again, we're talking Pinot Grigio here. So we're talking a few shades, you know, heavier. We're not talking, you know, uh, you know uh, Viognier to Pinot Grigio here in terms yeah. of thickness. I mean, this is Pinot Grigio, but without that kind of just neutral, kind of insipid, yeah. just flash of acidity and then gone. I think this one has a little bit of character to it, a little bit of weight, has this little straw uh, mm -hmm. kind of a mm -hmm. thing to it. Yeah, this is um, this is a porch pounder. This is, this is Pinot Grigio for the Pinot Grigio drinker. Yeah. It is a porch pounder because it goes down so easy. I'm already well, almost, need Pinot almost out of what even TC for needs. Everyone needs Pinot Grigio this time of year. Uh, you know, you know, I, you know, the, whether it be pick pools or some of the more obscure varietals that you guys pick up in the wine shop and and on the show, uh, those are varietals that are fun to to to, to introduce folks to. But again, the old standby are a nice Pinot Grigio. So this is one we get uh, from Marchetti uh, Wine Group, which again is is really kind of cool 
focuses on these really small boutique southern Italian producers. Uh, this is one of their own labels, so this isn't something mm -hmm. that um, is kind of mass produced, mass marketed. It's something that we've uh, had a gym in our portfolio for years. I've used it for mostly by the glass pours and and your favorite Italian restaurant for your um, you know chicken parms and whatnot. Um, but again, for the price point, you know, Daniel was like, hey, we need a good Pinot Grigio, something we haven't done before. Started flipping through, and I'm like, man, Talico. It's one of those you just kind of forget. You forgot. So good. Kind of forget about. So good. And wait until you see these prices. All right. So oop, wrong wrong thing. I was on the wrong thing. See, I jumped the gun. So if you're just buying a single bottle, 13, you get your club discount on top of that. But here's where the big discounts come in tonight. And uh, is on six bottles for 66. I guess it's down to $11 a bottle uh, and 108 a case. Yeah, 12 bottles. I mean, guys, $108 for a case yes. of wine. I mean, even uh, if you just need something just wet and cold to stick in the fridge, just to, you know, drink while you have to think about drinking something else, this is the wine to get. This, I mean, you know, uh, there's a ton of Pinot Grigios out there, but uh, this is one that, again, I think. For those people that like unoaked shards, that like that high acidity Pinot Gris, or even I call them the Pinot Gris that have graduated, you know, the Lamet Valley, the Alsatian, mm -hmm. uh, even the uh, the the, the uh, Weiss Burgundas or the Grau Burgunders in, 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 in Germany. This is such a unique Pinot Grigio because, again, it's southern Italy, uh, and again, it's 12.5%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but compared to northern Italy, you're usually like 10, uh, maybe 11%. So, again, just that point in alcohol, yeah. again, doesn't make it hot. It gives it just gives it more robustness. Yeah. And, and, I, and frankly, I think it could allow it to pair with more food other than just being a, yes, it's a porch pounder, but, you know, this could hold up to some different sauces, uh, caper, a uh, little yeah. caper dish of some oh, sort, God, you know, um, some orzo, something like that. Yeah, this, the, I, I, all the wines you're going to, uh, that we picked are absolutely Probably going to say that a few times tonight because we porch pounding crushable. They're they're just yeah, so. Just keep the porch just, I, I should I should just uh, yeah I'll I'll throw that up there right now. Uh, right, see I, I know we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to say it a lot tonight. The porch is back open. Uh, go ahead and start grabbing these bottles. And again, the thought was that we're going to give you guys such a great deal on these bottles. It was it was. If I, if I put it out for for down to what was it nine dollars a bottle? What it was at one oh eight? What is that yeah. nine dollars a bottle? You know, you might as well buy the case. You might as well buy the well, case and, at that and, point. And again, some of you, I, I mean, most of uh, the tried and true virtual fans out there. I mean, you guys are buying four sixes, twelves uh, on every you know you know every week, every other week, or whenever the case may be. So if you're shopping, um, and again, you're already going to put four or five uh, bottles uh, in the cart, you might as well just go ahead and add it up. Because again, 108 bucks. Um, I guess that's, I mean, that's before wines, most of our club discounts. So well, we've done some wines recently. I mean, great wines, but let's pay. I mean, 40, 50 bucks. We've done some wines easy yep. in that realm. So that could be you're, you're already at 108 with two or three bottles that we've done. We kind of, again, we were thinking, all right, let's go back to, you know, back to the edict, back to the roots uh, where we yep. kind of started the show. It's just some great wines, affordability. And, and that's what I told Danny. It's like, just offer a, a case discount because so yeah. often people come in the shop and say, I, just, I want a case. I just want a case. Well, and this is case. something you get now and you kind of drink it through the rest of the yeah. spring and summer. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, it looks like a little, you know, hey, but, you know, we also know that some people got some stimulus money. So we got, you know, you got a little bit of wine, extra budget, maybe. Finally uh, got my taxes in. So maybe, taxes, maybe you got, got some taxes tax money in, coming yeah. in, you know, hey, this is the week to splurge a little because now you can use these bottles throughout the spring and summer uh, and just enjoy them with friends. Uh, and not feel like you're 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 breaking breaking the budget to yeah. to to do this, but yeah, yeah, I think we I think we kicked it off with an amazing first wine, that's yeah. for sure. And, it's, uh, and again, it's a fun fun wine, and it is a fun little up and coming. Uh, well, not to say up and coming. I mean, but it's it's an area that's known for Pinot Grigio, not as known as as I mentioned some of those northern areas. But uh, we're going to do a wine tonight, uh, not too far from this area in Abruzzo, uh, which is really fun. Kind of land of Verdicchios and Trebbianos, and as a matter of fact, this producer is really well known for making Suave. So mm. for those of you that have attended our, our Italian dinners, or I know you guys have done Italian tastings in the shop. For those suave lovers out there, or just Italian white wine drinkers, you know who you are. Uh, this is a great one just to throw in your cart. So. Uh, and, and since you brought up dinners, uh, the uh, uh, tapas on the patios is is completely sold out. Um, we do have still have uh, time slots available uh, for the blind wine tasting in the shop on April 18th, so that's still available. Um, but yeah, the dinner on the tapas on the patio completely sold out. Yeah. That, that was it. It took a week. Well, so one and, week. Well, and just so, let them know if you guys are interested, because as these things go, you know there might be one or two people that might cancel. So I'm it's sure always true. They so may let have us a waiting know. list. So make sure we'll they have a waiting list. list. Yeah, yeah, make we'll sure put you a waiting list. Just let them know. We'll put a 
put together a list. And if anything else, maybe if we can put you out in the parking lot or the bar, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work, right? Yeah. As as uh, as uh, Tanya's cousin's <laughs> going, no, <laughs> we're, we're done. I don't care who else is. We're done with that. All but right. So uh, there, maybe, there it is. One more time. Go to the website. Uh, be sure to use your club level discounts. Uh, if you're in the uh, uh, in the wine club, um, it is. Uh, let me put, I even made a little thing right here so people would know. Uh, wine Club members use coupon code SELLER. If you're in the Seller Club, a state in a state or reserve in the Reserve Club or Grand Reserve, you'll use that and you'll get your club level discounts on top of what is already great deals. Um, so, you know, looking at that case at 108, most people are in our state club getting uh, basically uh, $10 off of that. So under $100 for the whole yeah. case. So don't, don't miss out on that. Um, really, really, really good pricing. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to move on uh, to uh, a a little Sauvignon Blanc. Um, this is, uh, you know, again, it's Sauvignon Blanc season. It's it's time you're eating. You're, we're going to be out on the patio with salads and and um, and, and fish mm -hmm. on the grill. Sauvignon Blanc is going to pair excellent with this. Yeah. And uh, our friends at Yolumba not only come with great wines, but they also come at great prices. Mm -hmm. um, so here is the Y-Series Sauvignon Blanc right here. Uh, we have an excellent price uh, normally on the shelf at 15 plus your discount. Uh, six bottles for 78 or a case for 132 Again, you're going to get your club discounts on that as well. So um, really getting, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, unbelievable it's, wine. basically I mean, $10 a bottle. Well, I mean, you know, so, uh, you know, the, the this last Italian uh, Pinot Grigio uh, is a, you know, uh, I think third or fourth generation um, at least uh, growers and, and then coming from um, vineyards even older than that but when we think about the new world you know we think about just a sort of you know 300 years or so give or take of any sort of modern vineyard culture as as we know it and as it goes today with different cultivars and things like that and, and especially as modern winemaking goes um you look at a few standouts globally you know wente and gunlock bunchu full disclosure i carry both of those uh, or people like ponzi or adelsheim in oregon or um uh, people like arazari in chile when you look at Australia, which is certainly a powerhouse when it comes to wine, I believe there's six globally just behind Argentina, uh, which is just behind the U.S. in terms of overall wine production. Uh, Yolumba is the oldest in Barossa Valley, which is, I'll say pound for pound, the most distinguished and most marketed. I would definitely say the most marketed, but comparatively speaking to say like McLaren Vale, uh, much different. But this is their Y series, which basically comes from the young vines. When I mean young, 15 to 25 years. So this isn't like super young as in like uh, winemakers, they usually go by the leaf, you know, so they would say the sixth leaf produces fruit in which you could usually start making some wine with. Uh, these guys, you know, owning the land and, and being what they are, usually are pretty discerning and, and having other vineyard space, they can mitigate it. So sometimes they don't uh, get a nickel off these new vineyards for a decade into it or, or plus. So that just let's go ahead and start there. Right. Uh, but anyway, the young, the young vines, they do, you know, everything. They actually do a Pinot Grigio because they do have an Italian heritage uh, going back through their winery. Uh, they also do a Sangiovese Rosé, which is beautiful. Obviously a Shiraz, big from Australia. But this is a cool Sauvignon Blanc. Now, when you think of the Pacific Islands, you always think, particularly New Zealand, they've kind of dominated not only the, the varietal, uh, but when you think of New Zealand, you can't really think of New Zealand without Sauvignon no, Blanc. Can't. But when you think about Australia, certainly there's other varietals, maybe Viognier, they do grow a lot of Viognier, uh, certainly Chardonnay and Margaret Rivers coming up, and, and Cabernet and, and Shiraz. I mean, Shiraz certainly is the, is the leader. But Yolumba, again, being what they are and having these small tucked away vineyards, what they do in this area, in this case, being in Barossa Valley, which is very close to uh, Adelaide, they source from areas uh, not only in um, that uh, that area, which is South Australia, but also in Victoria, which is the, the small little boot, uh, and then up all the way up in the Hunter Valley. Um, uh, so basically that is all sort of in that southeastern province. So when you look at this wine, it says South Australia because it is a blend of multi-AVAs, whether it be Barossa Valley or McLaren Vale or some of those other ones. But what I love about this wine uh, is it has those true forms of that like lemongrass and, you know, that kind of like scented of like fresh mint leaf and, yeah. you know, I mean, just this, this popping of just like zest. Yeah, there's not zest. a I mean, just there's like zest, but no, but it's not overly citrus. No, no, no. It's, and not, well, and it's um, not a great, it's not a grapefruit bomb. No, that's what not. I love about it. I mean, it's, it's a little bit warm 
performer. So for those of you that like, you know, think uh, like Honig Sauvignon Blanc, this is almost the difference mm -hmm. between a New Zealand, which is very, very cool, which is herbal, grassy, uh, grapefruity. And to when you think of a warm climate, which is California, which I always think of like melon uh, and a bit more floral, more tropical flavor. I think this is somewhere in the middle. Uh, again, being closer to the coast, being South Australia, which is the cooler part of the country, perfect for, for cool climate varietals. Uh, sees no time in oak. Uh, there's no uh, animal particulates that are made to filter the wine. Therefore, it is vegan. Uh, it is also grown organically and they have several uh, certified Demeter aka biodynamic vineyards uh, under belt as well. So it's just a it's just a really great fun Sauvignon Blanc for people that I think have strayed away because they had the grapefruit bomb one times too many yep. and they're like, okay, I'm, I'm done with it. Or for those of you that have had few that are, are just maybe just not your thing, this is something, again, Australia is not known for Sauvignon Blanc. If I had to look at a pie chart, I think it's like less than 5%. So it is kind of a rare thing to see a Sauvignon Blanc. But when you do have a winery like Yolumba behind it, I'm certainly down to try it. And they do a home run every, every single year. So, yeah, you know, this, this is this is delish. Um, and I tell you what, this is <laughs> it's, like a it's, it's a diaper dandy. I mean, dandy, it's, it's just, you know, I, we, we could have went with that big New Zealand grapefruit bomb. But I know a lot of folks, you know, they're not really into that. And they they're, they love Sauvignon Blanc, but they, they love the more sincere and the, and, the, and the California style. And that's why we decide to go this kind route. Of hits it. Yeah, I mean, I think that hits, it's got that minerality, a little that struck flint as a, a beautiful uh, Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc. And, you know, I'm smelling this too. I'm almost getting like a little of this pine, you mm -hmm. know, this like fresh forest kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, almost like this, uh, God, I mean, I know it's uh, not the not the most sexy thing to say, but you're like, like a like a manly old spicy type. You're like, wait, yeah. you walk by and you're just like, you're like, old spices it is, make a commercial It is, it is manly. It, is a man, it has a manly smell. Yeah. So for, so for yeah. those guys out there that for just whatever reason, you know, drink white in the closet or just, you know, when the wife comes oh. home, it's like, you're, why is your glass very cold? I thought you only drink red wine. You're like, Duh. Don't worry about what I was drinking, right? This is the Do not Sauvignon, look. Yeah, this is the Sauvignon Blanc that you're you're not afraid to show people that you drink. This is a really, really, really great Sauvignon Blanc. I mean, where's the ceviche? I mean, that, that's what I, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, or chips and salsa. That's yeah, all you chips, need. Chips and salsa would be you know, a little pick of the guy. Maybe uh, we might. I have some chips and salsa. Yeah, so crack, the guy might crack into that like a little bit before the when the game's on. Mm -hmm. Um. The great deal again. Uh, normally on the shelf, fifteen six for seventy eight, which gets it down to like that's thirteen a bottle, uh, and a case for one thirty two, which gets it down to um, like yeah. 11, eleven something a yeah. bottle. It's yeah. really it's yeah. it's it's a great great deal, yeah. um, and uh, to just take advantage of that. Uh, and again, you get your club discounts on top of that. Uh, so when you go to uh, check out. Be sure to use uh, seller if you're in the seller club, estate in the estate club, or reserve in the reserve club in the coupon code, and that will get your club level discount. So if you start looking at those numbers and then adding in your club level discount, price gets price is really yeah, good. Yeah. really good. Well, and again, for what you guys get, I mean, this this winery being I think sixth generation now, um, and you know, to have teetered several times throughout that uh, time, whether they were going to make it or not. Uh, is one of the few wineries like Gigal that has their own cooper. So uh, yeah. if and when they do use barrels, they actually make them on site. Uh, and they have, they they can afford themselves time to make the wine uh, mature or ferment the way they want to. So in this case, they, it's it's a wild ferment or a spon spontaneous. So there's several commercial yeast strands. And again, I'm not knocking anyone that uses a commercial yeast strand. I mean, some cokes flavors out there's some that need that there's some that do better with wild yeast but wild ferment um it, 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 i'll say it's like the the director and the producer you know the director has the vision so they want to go wild ferment the producer's like no we're going to commercial because it takes two days and we're on time we're on a budget so mm -hmm. so really there's that pull and tug of the money of the winery and and the winemaker now if you're both and then, then I, or, or, your, or your or your dad or somebody like that's the owner then obviously you have a more more tug with it but this is a entry-level sauvignon blanc fifth generation, oldest family owned winery from Barossa, so let's go ahead and say Australia, essentially, um, that's wild fermented, that take, basically takes anywhere from two weeks to a month just to even kind of inoculate and really begin fermentation. They do all that for under uh, under 12 bucks a bottle, under 11 gonna, bucks a bottle. Get so, anyway, I, I just don't that's, think that could be understated there. So. Yeah, it's really good pricing. And uh, the uh, uh, Alita uh, is asking where uh, Vanna Wines is tonight. Uh, she's out with her girlfriends tonight because um, she knows the big game's on and so she doesn't really want to watch. So she'll be back later, probably right around halftime, probably. Um, and so she's out uh, uh, with, with the girls. So uh, 
And, and she'll probably be coming back and drink these wines when she gets here. I oh, guarantee sure it. Yep. Guarantee it. Uh, next up, uh, where do you want to go? You want to the Fantini. The Fantini. Now, uh, this is a, a bottle that we're – or a brand that we're very familiar with. Um, this is the uh, Fantini Sangiovese. Uh, we've done the Montepulciano uh, on virtual vines. This is the first time using uh, the Sangiovese. Now, to me, this is your – this is your pizza wine. This is your your light red that you can do with some chicken or uh, some 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 burgers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the visual. That's the possible. Yeah, they, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy, um, but it's going to be one that drinks really, 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 really nice. Um, and that's why we put it in. We were like, hey, I need a red that is soft medium tannin that's the good good fruit that's just going to be enjoyable as you sit on the porch and enjoy these spring days and again i need it on a baller budget and that's going to I cast the wide net something that not everyone's going to turn their nose up nose up, nose up that to I and everyone from the i don't drink wine or i just want to start drinking wine the people that have a wine cellar uh, we want to think something that could really fit that venn diagram and yeah. frankly when it comes to red wines not only is italy it's sort of an easier it makes our, our life easier when we go to Italy, but also it makes our life easier when we go to Sangiovese because, I mean, we're often not – who doesn't like a Sangiovese? I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like you have to start there, you know, it's uh, true. on your wine journey. And you're like, you don't like Sangio. We just can't be friends, right? And so, since we're talking about what everybody's liking, uh, go ahead and throw go ahead and throw uh, in your comment uh, who you're rooting for tonight. Is it Baylor? Is it Gonzaga? Who do you want to win? Is it – Hey, a, a team that uh, is making its first national appearance uh, on the big stand on, on the dance floor, or is it a team that uh, is looking to go undefeated for the whole season? I mean, really, the storylines are there. Um, it's it's going to be a great game, guaranteed, no matter what. But the and and whoever wins, it's going to be a, a great story for either team, uh, either school. Um, and either way, it's going to be one of the school's first national championships. Yeah. So that's that's a lot of fun. So. And, and Go ahead and throw them in your comments, who you're rooting for, and uh, and we'll throw those up and uh, as we kind of oh, and just talk and, about this and, as an, and as an aside too, I mean, and Baylor's in Waco, Texas, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's that the one of the HGTV couples that are in, uh, oh, oh yeah, 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 the like games, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, you know, again, the wife, you know, just just the few shows that she loves, and I'm sure if Anna's watching, she can attest to this because I know she loves loves some HGTV, but. Um, uh, I could just imagine it. if if Baylor wins. I know it's not probably who you want uh, to win, but if Baylor no. does win, I could just imagine it, they have to do an episode, right? I mean, is there, is there I, yeah, episode I think they like yeah, they have to do over. Gotta, gotta do redo like a that, dorm. Right? We'll have to redo a dorm on campus, I guess. Maybe uh, right, right there. Well, we got we got one vote in there for Gonzaga. There you go. Um, and, and and full disclosure, I got my master's degree from Gonzaga, so I, I have a little bit of. Uh, and, and the funny, normally during the tournament, I wear my Gonzaga stuff the whole time. Mm -hmm. But now they've been on such a run. Yeah, this, I'm yeah. like, nope, can't wear it's it. True baseball guy, can't, right I there. can't wear it. I, I, if I put it on, I'm going to jinx it. <laughs> so there's so. Here's the thing. Uh, tomorrow in the shop, if Gonzaga wins, I will be all gonzaga up. Uh, and uh, it's also uh, a little uh, going away party uh, for Craig, uh, who will work in the shop for us. Um, he's uh, he's actually taking, taking a new job in Arizona. So if you want to come by uh, the shop tomorrow night, uh, try some of these wines, and then also uh, 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 say goodbye to Craig. Uh, come on in and do that. Um, and so, yeah, we got another we got another vote for Gonzaga, John Rodeo. Uh, and he just hopes for a, a good game. I'm sure it's going to be a good game. I don't think it's going to be a, a blowout because uh, uh, there's some good stars on the on the Baylor team. Uh, but but Timmy and and, uh, and and Suggs, I mean that they just that, that just got, Gonzaga's got some players too. Yeah. But, so yeah. it should should be fun. But now let's get back <laughs> into the San Giovese. We want to keep this yeah. show rolling because I want everybody to watch the games tonight and uh, and, uh, and and us have time to do do it as well. So uh, let's uh, yeah let's get into yeah. it. So, so, so Fantini, the, tell the, us about the, it. Yeah, so this is by a little company called Farnese, and uh, Fantini is a uh, a separate label they created, uh, well, I'd say about a decade or so ago, and, and they rebranded, kind of did, did a little label change. They actually have a um, partnership with the uh, Zwarski Crystal Company. So I know you guys have had a few of the uh, sparkling uh, wines in the shop, or I, at least I'll show you the bottles. They almost like the little Chateau Miraval bottles yep, yep. with like a Zwarski Crystal uh, in it. Uh, and anyway, uh, so, so when we think of Sangiovese and one of the top 20 grapes grown in Italy, uh, Sangiovese is just because of the permutations that have 
spread all throughout Italy. In Tuscany, which is kind of thought of as the birthplace of Sangiovese, there's over 200 clones in Chianti just alone. Uh, uh, you know, not even to, to mention Brunello's and all those other um, like. And if you think about all the synonyms of Sangiovese that's grown all throughout Italy, uh, it makes it one number, I think, one or two in terms of just uh, varietals grown all throughout uh, the country. Now, reason being is uh, over time, you know, the Italian Americans or just Americans in general, if you think about one Italian grape varietal, Sangiovese, as obscure as it is to some, it's probably not as obscure as, as certainly other ones I could sit here and yeah. name, right? So, what I love about this wine. It's not from Tuscany or some of these other places I mentioned, but not being from these areas that are protected because that's really what they are. People always think of the strip on the bottle yeah. as, a, as a sign of quality, and it's not a sign of quality. The winery is the quality. Any winery that is in the boundaries or the geographical laws of the DOC or DOCG or falls within what the guidelines are can have that pretty pink strip and a strip on the bottle. And obviously, it's a very it could be more of a marketing term. But what I love about this wine is it's Sangiovese, uh, grown by a very reputable winery, but it comes in at what they call the IGT or the table wine. Now, there's a ton of table wine that's made in Italy. However, there are a lot of the Super Tuscans, for instance, are considered table wines. That's why for years, a Cabernet-based blend from like Bulgari and Tuscany would cost you like 15 bucks. That should have been 60 bucks and a lot often is today. And when you think about Ornelia or Sessicaia or Tiganello, I mean, these wines are 100, 150 bucks a bottle, right? Uh, and they're Cabernet-based, right, with some Sangiovese. Uh, but they're what they consider IGT, right? So table wines uh, that have no strips. So what's great about Sangiovese is they've taken a grape that people are familiar with, said, all right, we're going to make it a little easy, put it on the front label and the back label for you. Um, and obviously you have this nice, almost just international kind of mm -hmm. label. I mean, I know, you know, some countries are very prideful and, you know, some French labels look very French and some Italians look very Italians, but I think this could probably sell in just about any shop around the world. And what I love about this wine is it's from Abruzzo. So it's a little bit further south than Tuscany, uh, has a little bit more growing time. And again, uh, as the blood of Jupiter, AKA the Sangiovese uh, is, you know, I, I always tell people think of it like Pinot Noir in terms of viticulture. It's a very thin skin grape. Uh, it, it's a very low yielding grape in many cases. Uh, it genetically mutates very easily. So that's why Pinot Noir has so many different gene um, gene genetic variants and mutations. And you can certainly find lots of, you know, probably white Sangioveses out there if mm -hmm. one nowhere to dig enough. Um, but what I love about this wine is it really kind of meets not as hot as, say, Sicily, so you find that big, ripe, bold style, and maybe not as light as some Chiantis. I think some of the Chiantis, the big bulk producers of people have gotten away from it because they go, yeah. you know what, I, it's, you know, where's the beef, you know? Yep. Uh, they're, yep. they're kind You're of right. thin, they're kind of insipid, they kind of go away, they're like, a, they're almost acidic. Mm -hmm. Right. And yep. you buy them because they have in a pretty bottle. They're the pretty little, you know, the, 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 uh, the liquor bottle. Right. Yeah. And I think that at some point they stopped making those because the bottles themselves cost more money than the wine they're actually <laughs> putting in in the darn bottle. So I guess point being what I'm trying to say here is it really kind of crosses both paths of Italy being in the cooler north and the warmer south, um, getting that kind of nice ripening right on the kind of foothills of the Apennine Mountains that overlooks the Adriatic coast. Uh, and this is that beautiful, just luscious, well, I wouldn't say luscious, but like just this medium body, but it gives you everything. It like, it just punches above its weight. It does. It's, it, you know, it's medium body. It comes, it's, it every, it's every bit as a middleweight, and you, but you start to drink it and you, and you pick up the bottle and you're like, honey, how much do we pay for this uh, yeah, bottle? Yeah. And you're just like, you know, I should have, I should have, we should have given 25 bucks a bottle for this stuff. It's, and it's, you it's know, really, and that's why restaurants, you know, and I won't say which ones still have this on the list for 35, 40 bucks a bottle and can get, get away with it all day long. Yeah. So it, it drinks very much like that. It, uh, it, it drinks, it drinks really, really nice. It's light. It's, it's, it, it, and, but yet has this big mouth fill, um, good dark fruits on the front. Well, the, che oh, the cherry is, the cherry. is there. I mean, you know, it's not, super bright cherry but the, the, it's like at first you get this kind of smoky um kind of mold cherry up front and then that acidity kind of just ring, yeah. kind of the background almost that old school thx uh graphic it was where's the remote because you're going to be loud it's going to be loud yeah that's, that's kind of what yeah it's it right does there. it does turn but, it but, up but, but not as much it, but no, but no it goes off. to 11 it, it goes, definitely it goes, goes to, to 11. Don't, don't touch it I, I, I didn't touch it. No, okay, you've seen enough of that one. Yeah. <laughs> it goes to it goes 11. To 11. 
man. No, uh, this is. Uh, this one goes to 12. This one goes to 12. See, there we go. No because you know why? No this goes to 12? No copyright. Because for 12, you're going to get it for 132 plus your club <laughs> discount. That's go. why it's got to go to 12. You can't stop at 11 because this needs to go one more. I think um, if, if we made some loaded great Fantini, this goes to 12 shirts. That actually gives us a little bit of sponsorship. Right? I'm sure. I mean, you're just like, these, look at these guys. These, out in, I know. Out, out, out in, where is it in North Carolina? They're just out there just selling some great. I'm like, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Trying, trying to bring the good stuff to everybody. We're, bring, so. we're bringing the good stuff. And tonight we're bringing the good stuff if you're a baller on a budget. Because even though you might sit there and go, oh, I'm in 32, you know, plus my club discount. Uh, you're gonna go through the whole case. You're gonna go through the whole case. Get the discount. You're gonna pass uh, a few bottles out. Some of the yeah, folks maybe. you haven't seen as much. I know Friends offices are trying to open up a little bit more. Uh, as work starts opening up a little bit more. I mean, again, as these things, you know, again, hopefully starts trending in in that direction, we can um, start gathering a little bit more. But even if even if not, even as a thank you to, to some of the folks that are still out there, frontline workers. I mean, this is just a great gift uh, that you don't really know maybe where they're at in terms of what they like. I mean, you don't know if they're a seasoned wine drink or whatever that's supposed to mean or people that just want to get into wine this is something that will get somebody in because i want to tell you what danny knows and i know after selling wine for a long time people go in the shop they get a 50 dollars cabernet from napa that they would like right they give it to someone that maybe doesn't drink wine that often and then maybe just at the yeah. wrong time whatever else doesn't give enough time big, to breathe big, and just slams it and it's just and you're just like whoa that's either dry or just not, or just drinking it too and they, they just don't like it don't appreciate it that is what it is. This is something they can they can open the cap. They don't even need one of these guys. Yep. Yep. They don't it's even a, need that. The right first there. three are all Stelvin enclosures. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Stelvin um, Society. Ste Stelvin Society. Society. These Society. are all in the Stelvin Society of yeah. wines. Yeah. Uh, you know, going on the whole, even just work coworkers. You know, I think by you know May, June, as, as we start going, you know, the amount of shots that everybody are having, and uh, I think, and as things are opening up, you know, people are going to be having a little more backyard gatherings and 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 things like that. This is the hey, thanks so much for hosting uh, bottle right mm -hmm. there. Thank you so much for hosting. And guess what? If you're having the burgers, you're having the barbecue chicken, you're having the you know uh, the the ribs. No. This is going to go with all of that. Yeah. Um, and plant Parmesan. I thought oh, about Parmesan earlier. Yeah. Chicken Parmesan. I mean, just anything yeah. with tomato sauce. Anything. Yeah. Any, any sauces. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, God, just get you some mozzarella sticks and, and dip them in marinara. I mean, I would, I'd go that route too. You can do that. I mean, we got the big game coming up. You got the I big mean, game. Some wings going on. Wings I mean, this is some of this. Wing, you know? Yeah. Like I said, you mentioned barbecue chicken. You know, mm -hmm. get that going right here. Uh, I, could I could totally see this. And again, this is, you know, and again, another thing I, I, we probably should say, unpretentious wines I and mean, that's no. what's great about these wines these are these are wines that could go with just a ham sandwich potato chips picnic um obviously they're budget yeah. friendly but again we also like to think we could fool a lot of wine buyers uh, in the triad into thinking that they would probably end up paying a lot more than they normally do uh and they'd probably be surprised at the price so yeah no this is this is yummy and again we have a good six six bottle price or a case price or if you're saying hey i think i need some i need some reds and white go ahead mix them up get six of one six of the other take advantage of the deal the big deal now for for this show again was to lower the price down to a price where um you know getting getting six or eight is is like wow that that, that was such a good deal i mean you're gonna get i think i think what is you're looking at twelve dollars a bottle eleven dollars a bottle yeah it's um, 12 times 12 is a 144 so i mean, yeah, I mean so, and yeah, then plus, that. yeah and then you're gonna and you're gonna get your club discount on top of that yeah. this is this is the time to do it yeah well and, and again some of you uh some of you guys i mean you, you know us but even if you're just like all right guys well i need to mix and match i mean hey Danny was great enough because we thought about it. We're like, well, hey, some of you may want to go, you know, maybe not a case of one, but maybe we'll do six and six and six, whatever. Yeah. This is a great opportunity at these prices. I mean, I think I saw 66 bucks. I mean, all under, I mean, under 80 bucks for six bottles of wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, tell me where you can go in and within the next, you know, well, I'd say maybe the next day, depending on the throwaway party, uh, the, uh, the not throwaway, but throwaway, uh, the uh, go away party. Uh, these probably wines won't last too much longer, but mm -hmm. these are some fantastic wines and some, you know, that have been tried and true. I know you Lumba. From like yeah, we show I mean, one. I mean, I think that was one the of the ones yeah, 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 the multiple BNA, times. And sold you know, out. some of the some of the reds, bigger yeah. reds, the signature. So it's yeah. just that's a tried and true. Uh, that some yeah. of you that uh, don't know, you better ask somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so also, this is the time as we move into our last one. So go over to loadagrape.com. 
throw these in your cart. Again, remember uh, for our members, um, use your coupon code seller. If you're in the seller club, the state and the state club and reserve. If you're in the grand reserve and reserve club to get your club level discounts. Uh, so, and knowing most, most of you guys are getting 10 to 15% off on these, on these prices, which I, I told you I'm crushing the internet with those, with those prices. Uh, but next week, next week, I want to apologize because I'm actually not going to be available. Um, so it won't be a live show. It's actually going to be a, a pre-record um, that will go out in the email on Monday morning. So the cool thing is, me and TC are going to put together a fun little video uh, of a couple of wines, and they're going to be paired with Chick Fil A. Oh, so yes. we're going to oh, do yes. it. We're going to go to the Chick Fil A drive-through. We're going to get some. We're going to get some food. We're going to come back to the wine shop, and we are going to show you what wines to pair with your Chick Fil A. Now this is going to be fun. Sauces too, or should we so, be plain? Plain, oh, plain I think, and I think, sauces I think, later. Yeah, well, plain sauces. Maybe work. that's what we should. We should get some uh, suggestions on sauces. Yes, yeah, or or if there's something on the menu specifically that you'd like us to to to. Got to get something grilled, right? Got yeah. your wrap, maybe. Yeah, grill wrap. We're going to have to. You know, to, what else you know, they have? Uh, you know, we're going to have to have the original chicken sure, sandwich. Gonna so that's going to be there. Also, spicy because you think a spicy. Foods, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, a spicy sandwich yeah, too. Spicy we're, we're gonna we're gonna pair yeah. it all out, um, and uh, so that's that's gonna be a fun little show. Um, it's gonna be about you know 10, 10 minutes, uh, fifteen minutes max, so you can watch it pretty quick. Share it with some friends. We're gonna make it fun and uh, and and uh, and uh, really talk about the wines pretty quick because it's not so much about the wines that we'll be showcasing. It's just gonna be about the varietal of yeah. wine. So in the show we have diversity. I mean, yeah. we always think of, you know, you know, we have to, you know, break out our Julia Child recipe and we all end up pulling our hair out because we burnt something or we're trying to cook something that we've never cooked before. But this is something that you can see guys that uh, something that most of you are probably eating on nightly basis. You're like, all right, well, I can't open a bottle of wine with a Chick-fil-A. So, yes, you can. You know, yes. we're, we're gonna show you we're that. We're gonna you show can. you again. Uh, and uh, and and, and as we move on to the next one, a quick anecdote that one of um, sort of a friend of a friend, he was a, a computer designer for a friend's company and uh, lived in England. His name was Daniel. Very, very, very English. Um, and we, uh, after, you know, probably having a couple beers or something like that, uh, Dave, which is my friend was a big Chick-fil-A fan and he wanted to go buy Chick-fil-A. And of course, Daniel's like, what is Chick-fil-A? And of course we just, yeah, we have to go you know, buy, buy Chick-fil-A. So we're standing in line. God, you know, we could go in restaurants, right? We're standing in line, and and for whatever reason, I'm you know, it's it's a, it's a line, and I'm just trying to make conversation. And um, I remember um, seeing something like I always do on Chick Fil A, and I'm like, oh yeah, I hear this was like a company, it was a diner, and they used to do chicken, and then it was it was the Dwarf House, and it started in Atlanta, and you know, a little bit what I knew about Chick Fil A, just as conversation. Yeah. He looks at me and goes, hey, what is this? The the uh, the story about how you do the chicken burger. <laughs> I was like, chicken burger. So small. He goes, "What is this? The story of the chicken burger?" <laughs> I, was just, I was like, "Okay, sorry, it's a big thing here. Yeah, it's like chicken and bread and pickles. Okay, it, it's it's a big thing. It's like pickles okay, on a chicken I, sandwich. Yeah, it's a big on. thing. Uh, big big thing." Uh, so that's gonna be a fun show. I we I know I just asked what everybody's drinking tonight. So let's uh, let's see what the uh, comments are, are here. On a budget? Are you Bone. Out tonight? Yeah. Are you what's, what, out? Do uh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Well, well, well. Alita really want and and you know, hi Barb. Uh, Scott wants to know what you're sipping on specifically, Barb. So you know, you better let us know, Barb. What are what are you having tonight? Um, yeah, and. Here we are. We're sipping on a 2004 14 Bill of Gloss Peter Noir from Monterey Valley. Yeah. Oh, okay. Get through all that wax there. And that's another yeah. they, they, It seems like every year I see one of those bottles, they put more and more wax on it. <laughs> yeah, I am. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, that sounds absolutely delicious. Uh, and since you brought up Bell of Gloss, I should let you know that. Uh, uh, the last show of the month will be live again, and it will be, unfortunately, TC won't be here with us. We're going to have um, some folks from Copper Cane. Uh, so we'll be talking about Bella Gloss and Quilt and, um, and and Bloem and a couple other uh, from their line. So there, it's, it's uh, this is how it goes. So, um, and uh, to answer your question there, uh, Barb is uh, La Solitude Cooks de Rhone. That was one of the uh, 80s deal email specials. And over here we have Michelle. She's uh, a little peak pool panette. I love the peak pool panette. I'm telling you, mm, that's perfect for this weather right now. So uh, we might have to focus on one of those here soon yeah. as well. Uh, on one of these. One of those working sometime soon. Yeah. 
Yep, that is awesome. So let's move on to our next wine right trucking now. Right along. Yeah, trucking well, right along. Right, trucking right along. Again, over, over, yeah, every, everything, pounding, poor Tyler, you're going to have to uh, the pounder sign up. Yeah, I was, I was about to do that. I mean, these are all porch pounders. You're going to be porch pounding these <laughs> away. Um, uh, so uh, this is this is going to be fun. So we're going to have um, – uh, this is one I, – I hope he's still watching, um, John Rodeo. Um, this this is your pick for the night right here. We got we got one for you, definitely. Um, one for the Jorge, uh, the Jorge uh, book. Uh, you know, I remember – trying this wine for the first time a few years ago. They did a uh, Victor actually. That's the first time I got to meet him in Charlotte. We did a sort of a portfolio tasting. And uh, this was just talk about a gem. I mean, just an absolute gem that kind of shame on me, I think for a couple of years and then kind of sat dormant in our book amongst other, you know, gems at, at various price points. And I was like, man, I need to take this out more often. Um, but what's great about this wine is it's Tempranillo, first of all, from Spain, uh, but not being from the typical, atypical areas, like whether it be Rioja, Ribera del Duero, or Toro, some of those other areas that we've done before. This comes from a little bit further south, uh, and actually called the Valley of the Fallen, not too far away from a, a huge uh, Franco uh, monument, which even to this day is sort of divisive, depending on you know, some people look at it and like, you know, it's a great, great man and leader. Some go, hey, we're still feeling the effects of it was today. But I think that's one thing that kind of puts Spain, at least on the international level, behind uh, Italy, or at least France first, then Italy, uh, but now are, are catching up in spades, literally because of people you know, again, people are budget conscious. People are like, there's so many great wines out there. Where can I get the most value, the most bang for my buck? And we've talked about it at nauseum, but Spain over delivers time and time and time again. So this comes from an area that unfortunately a lot of the, as we talked about a few shows ago, that the EU are, are paying some of these really little farmers to uproot and uh, really, and to be fair, they're, they're big bulk Iran. We talked about it before. It's a, it's a grape that most people have never heard of, even though it's the most widely planted grape in the entire world, only grows in Spain. Uh, but a lot of these big bulk former farmers in um, La Mancha, you know, the land of Don Quixote, uh, that's where really, really the bulk wine is made, the box wine. We see any box wine music from Spain. It's usually somewhere in and around source from there. Uh, Iran based, Viora, Maccabeu, certainly Grenache, Tempranillo is going to be thrown in there. What I love about these guys right here, and again, Victor, they're so fervent about finding these small boutique, family owned vineyards and vines or, or, or wineries that focus on these super, super old vines. And we talked about it before, even though Spain grows more wine than or has more vines under acre than anyone else in the world. They produce less wine than both Italy and France because they covet these old vines. So when you think about an area that is for years, let's say for 50 years, been thought of as a bulk wine region, for years these vines have been getting older and older and older. And so essentially the naysayers, the quick buck artists, they, they get out because they're quick buck artists, right? But the people that stick with the market, so to speak, you know, the bull and bear markets, you know, the, the cream always rises to the top. And if they've kind of stick to their guns year in and year out, they, they become, you know, wow, you need to go see those guys. I mean, they make the best, whatever it is around here, right? So this particular company uh, has has kept the light bills paid making a wine that I sell a ton of called Protocolo. Uh, we sell lots of Protocolo. It's a great just drinkable banquet type of wine uh, that they make uh, at the winery that sees no time in oak whatsoever. Uh, it's usually their youngest vines at like 30 years old. Uh, when we go a little bit older to about 40 to 50 years old, we actually have uh, this particular wine uh, right here, uh, which they call it their uh, kind of Stile de Codais, which is a sort of a, an old, it's a sort of a linguistic term when you think of the southern part of Spain, uh, and again, kind of the Don Quixote time and area, kind of a little homage and throwback to that, and the uh, conquistadors and, and, and times of the Crusades and things like that. But anyway, long story short, what I love about this wine, you get the ripeness, you get all that vanilla, your classic whatever that means, California drinkers is absolutely going to love this wine. Uh, spends about six months at the winery and then another six months in either French or American uh, Bordelais barrels. So a little bit longer, a little bit fatter mm -hmm. than the bigger uh, burger, 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 burger barrels that you see typically. Uh, but uh, but a, a tasty wine that's got balance, it's got depth, it's got some pizzazz. And all the while you're looking at yourself and you're like, it's only 
that much. And so again, I think even as Spain goes, you can find some great deals in Rioja, Ribera del Duero, and Toro. But most of those deals are usually going to start about 15 ish dollars, I think, with some of the best ones starting at certainly 20 and 30 dollars and going up. This is an area that yeah, certainly there's a lot of bulk wine that's being made there, but most of the bulk wine takes care of itself. They kind of know what they're being made. People like this, they're like, well, we're going to make, you know, wines that are being sold for, you know, a couple extra euros. And they're just like, why would you want to do that? Why, why, why don't you <laughs> cut those vines down or maybe just, you know, just go ahead and take the money from the EU. And so they can build a highway, you know, kind of right yeah, here. Infrastructure, right? You know, infrastructure. Just, yeah, yeah. So uh, just kind of go through it. So what I love about this wine is it's just a little bit of just everything that you want in a Tempranillo. It's got this this kind of brambly strawberry thing to it. A little like uh, a little, you know, just a slight pepper, slight herbal, but very mild, very, very minuscule. It's not like overwhelming. It's not overwhelming with the oak. The oak's there just to prop up that Tempranillo. Um, but a great, great little wine. I'm thinking like fajitas. I had tacos last night. This would be a perfect taco wine with some taco yes. seasoning. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, just a great, great little wine. What do you think about this? Uh, this is, I, I have to get a little refill because uh, I drank it so fast because it's just so good. Uh, and we knew it was. We knew all these were going to be porch pounders for tonight. That's why we picked them. Uh, again, it's baller on a budget. Got a great deal price on this. Uh, six pack for 78 Full case for 132 Plus your club discounts. This is this is this is Tempranillo. This is what Tempranillo is supposed to taste like. Well, this is, is Spain's grape. I mean, this is the grape that they hung their hat on. I mean, really, nowhere else in the world does it quite like Spain. Uh, and uh, and and again, I think um, and I'm not saying this is the this is the be all end all representation, but again, I think when you when you think of a, a country that's already known for great value, uh, where can you dig a little bit deeper? And I think when you think of southern Spain, much like southern Italy or southern France these lesser known areas uh, that aren't maybe as well known for making either quote unquote uh, higher quality, um, you know, uh, retail wine uh, or uh, wine that is made for, I don't necessarily say aging, but a wine that you're like, wow, you know, it actually is indicative of the varietal most often, yeah. you know, they're just making uh, wines for, you know, for, you know, the, the, the German supermarkets and stuff like that, which I, I did ask one time, Victor, I'm like, you know, how, how could it be that we, have never sold Iran and, and yet it's the most widely planted grape in the world. And he's like, well, if you ever see a Blanco in Spain, probably it's got some of that in it, number one. And he goes, and he goes by itself, it's not that great. And I was like, well, where do you guys sell the most of it to? And he goes, Germany. <laughs> <And I was laughs> like, he's like, they have a lot of barbecues and they like three liter box wines. And I was like, all right, well, I yeah, that works. Right but th speaking of barbecues, this would be another great barbecue, barbecue wine. wine. Yeah. Another yeah. great barbecue wine. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, some uh, burgers, some lamb, even, you know, something, uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, you know, some maybe some mushrooms, some portobello mushrooms, or oh, something like that, a little like balsamic, a like a shroom and Swiss burger. Shroom and Swiss, man, I like Whoa. it. Mm -hmm. Starting to get hungry. A little brioche bun. Mm. Little brioche bun. Oh, mm. the brioche bun. Oh. What you got to I me? Mean, who, who eats the dry? You can't do it like a dry, like a wheat, like a dry wheat bun. You got to yeah. I mean, if you're gonna do a burger, or if you're gonna like skimp out on the burger, you got to do get, all on the brioche. You know? Yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. If you're getting a Boca burger, a bubble burger. Go 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 up on go, go up on the brioche, brioche or even even potato roll. My my wife was like, yeah, oh yeah, I had one of those in a while. She oh. just uh, yeah, she keeps those away from me. But yeah. she does love. You, you, she does you love four of them. Oh yeah, I mean she'll just, you just, yeah. just don't even need the just like oh, should we have hamburgers last night? Where all the buns go? No yeah, I made, no a made a sandwich. Made a sandwich. Made a sandwich. It just had, had to yeah. take four buns. <laughs> <laughs> oh Stacker. man, it's got to get up there. Um, man, so not a big show tonight. We want to make it but nice and short for you. Uh, we'll do a quick recap. But this one right here, uh, fifteen dollars normally on the shelf, six for seventy-eight or a whole case for one thirty-two. And uh, yeah, this is one that um, I can I can tell you right now. Uh, you'll be grabbing the second bottle pretty quick, uh, pretty quick. So, uh, again, at these prices, you know, take it, take it to the bank, uh, put, put a little, put a, put a little bit behind, uh, for, you know, for the, your youth during the summer, you're going to be very, very, very happy with it. So let's do a quick recap and we'll get you guys on so you can watch the game tonight. Uh, we started off with a, uh, lovely, Pinot Grigio. It's Pinot Grigio season. Get ready. It's time. Uh, as as Vanna Vines would say, Pinot Grigio has the least amount of calories of all the grapes. There you go. So 
And when I always say, wow, we go through Pinot Grigio so fast at the wine shop. And she's like, that's because all the ladies who are reading all the magazines know that Pinot Grigio has the least amount of calories. So they can drink the whole bottle and not feel guilty. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know. It's so, small sips too. Right? Small sips. And yeah. So this is uh, the, the deal of the night. Uh, normally on the shelf at 13. You can actually you can get one bottle and just put your club discount in or, or just order one bottle. That's fine. Uh, but big discounts for uh, six wines. So it gets down to like $11 a bottle uh, and then a case for at 108 That's incredible. Um, so, uh, yeah, take it, take advantage of that. Uh, and this is a fun, fun wine to, to share with coworkers and barbecues all summer long. Uh, then we did a, a lovely Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Ulumba, our friends at Ulumba, the Y series. Uh, many you might remember the Viognier. This uh, this Sauvignon Blanc is going to drink again more uh, California style than it is going to drink New Zealand. So if you're if you're trying to figure out big grapefruit bomb, it is not that. This is definitely the um, easy drinking. Uh, I mean, to me, the, 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 the notes of the lemongrass, a little bit of citrus, mm. uh, but not overpowering in any department, mm. just a beautiful, beautiful way. Yeah. Wine. Talk about tacos earlier. I mean, chips and salsa, yeah. you know, a little, a little, uh, pick of the guy of some sort. This would mm. be a perfect one. Wow. It's delish. <laughs> Uh, then we uh, then we went to the Fantini, the Sangiovese. Now, folks, we might go. Oh, that name looks familiar. That's because in Virtual Vines we did do the uh, Montepulciano from them. Porsche pounding red. That's it. It's gonna go with again the burgers, the dogs, the anything you put on the grill, barbecue chicken, chicken wings. Um, it, it's it's and some of you may ask there style. maybe that bought the the Montepulciano how does it differ uh, than the San Giovese? Uh, I would say the San Giovese to me uh, has a bit more of this like round cherry note to it. Um, you know, if maybe you have dueling violins, I would say the the the, the lighter the higher pitch of the two would be the Montepulciano, and then the one that'd be a little bit deeper, not kind of bass baritone, but certainly still have that high pitch, but a little bit richer. I guess would be the better way to describe it. Uh, would be the Sangiovese. So for those of you that like the Montepulciano, uh, that want to go maybe just uh, just one, you know, you're, you know, that was already a ten for you because again, that's maybe a mid-bodied wine. This would be, you know, maybe a five, may, yeah. maybe five Ooh. and a half or some or some such. Yeah, so yeah. that there. Sorry, I didn't click it down there. So the Fantini, uh, fifteen on the shelf, six bottles for seventy-eight, case for one thirty-two. Again, maybe you want to mix and match. Get six of this, six of that. Have yourself a case. This is the time. Take advantage of it. Uh, and then the Cordice. Cordice. Could he say? Could he say? Could he say? Sounds, good. Sounds yeah. good. I'll go with that. I don't speak a lot of Spanish. Uh, Tempranillo, uh, lovely, lovely wine. It's what's in my glass right now. It is delicious. Um, great fruit on the front, mild to mid medium ta tannin on the on the mouth. Um, a little, 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 little kind of um, strawberry, black currant. Uh, just a just a fun. Just a fun little red wine. Right. I think this is this is this is one again. We talked about barbecue. We talked about uh, maybe maybe pork chops on the grill. Um, I'm 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 loving this, mm -hmm. and we have this one down uh, to the same price. Normally on the shelf at fifteen, uh, six for seventy eight, or a case for one thirty two. Uh, and the big thing to remember here is. Uh, if you're in the wine club, use the coupon code. Uh, if you're in a seller club, write seller in the coupon code. A state reserve. If you're in the reserve club or the grand reserve club, you'll just type reserve at checkout, and you'll get your club member discounts. Uh, again, you can come over tomorrow. I'll be in the shop uh, tomorrow night. Uh, you can uh, taste these wines and um, also say goodbye to Craig as he goes off to uh, to Arizona. Yeah. So you. so that's kind of that's kind of the show. Big baller, baller on a budget. Um, do you want to remind you next Monday we'll, you'll get the, the the video in your email on Monday so don't don't worry about tuning in for a live show me and TC are gonna have a lot of fun I'll put together uh, a cool little vlog basically of us heading to the chick-fil-a getting all the food and then coming back and talking about some wines uh, and and, uh, and and telling you why it pairs and uh, should be should be a lot of fun so uh, so look forward to putting that together for you uh, and then we'll be back that following Monday with Copper Cane. So the folks from Copper Cane are going to join uh, on the on the call and uh, going to be a lot of, a lot of fun tasting that. So that's your Bella Glosses, your Quilts, um, your Blowings, your uh, – I don't remember else what we discussed in that tasting, but there's, there's, it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. 
it is going to be really awesome. So, um, and then I, I've been seeing some comments here. Let me read through the comments before we, uh, uh, I think everybody's talking about their dinners tonight. So, which is making me hun- hungry because I haven't had dinner yet. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to close it up here. Um, thanks so much for tuning in tonight, uh, being a part of the show and supporting the show. Uh, hope you take advantage of these great deals. Anything that you order uh, tonight will be available Wednesday. Um, and I'll put that up on the screen right now. Uh, nope, that's not the one. Uh, Wednesday at four o'clock uh, will be available for pickup. Um, and especially uh, if you guys are in cases and six and don't wait, got to order those because I don't have that many in the shop. Um, so if you're if you're getting multiple multiple bottles, you have to you have to order ahead of time. So thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you in the shop this week. Uh, PC, any last comments? I, I, you know, I, again, I think that's that's one thing we've uh, said, you know, seen time and time again. You don't have to spend a lot of money to uh, have big flavor. Uh, so uh, I think these wines all over deliver. Uh, I think this would be another show we could revisit. I mean, I yeah. think that's something we've touched on, but uh, just this theme of maybe a, you know, call it the case special or, uh, or or maybe just the blowout special or kind of go back to a show where we just uh, maybe auction off or we have Vanna on the side where we're just like, all right. Four bottles left, three Four bottles left. left. That's all we got, yeah. you know. Uh, but I think these are great wines. We have plenty of, of wines. But as Danny said, you know, make sure you let them know by tomorrow, by tomorrow after early afternoon, if possible, so what, what you can secure the wine for uh, for Wednesday for whatever your weekend plans are. Yeah. And as uh, and again, as Mother's Day comes up, I mean, hey, what's better than just putting a bow on a case of wine and giving it to mom right there? There you, you know, go. So. There you go, mom. Here's a whole case. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much. Look forward to seeing the shop. Uh, and uh, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with the uh, Chick Fil A uh, show. So be sure to to share that with your friends once we get it up. Uh, so thank you so much. Have a wonderful night and go Zags. <laughs>